All right, guys. So we're going to do another episode of Cigars from Afar, uh, Tobacco Grove. We're going to do an exclusive with Rob, Mr. Gagne, uh, from Bovida. And Bovida Rob. He, he, yeah, that's right. Bovida Rob, as he's known. One and only. Yeah. So how you doing, Rob? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. Loving my porch. Background. Loving life. The background got- is great. You got to have it, man. You got to represent. The, this whole Zoom thing is fun because you can have a background. It looks slightly like you're in front of a green screen. This is you crazy. You can kind of see like, the, the white you know, shadow that's around me. That's pretty know. sick, man. You're going to do a weather report later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Over uh, <laughs> yeah, well, like, where are the boat is that is right, that like a right high here. pressure system or would that be a low pressure system as far as humidity is uh, concerned? Oh, you know, it's you know, slightly. It can be both, whatever you want it to be, high or low. You know, we we got all different RH levels. It's we're we're worried about barometric pressure, man. That's that's a, but in our humidor, it's just not in our level. Rob, what are you lighting up? Mm, I'm lighting up a uh, Padron uh, forty years 40 that I got from oh, you guys. Oh boy, that's my yeah. is my favorite Padron. I love that. What's the difference? Is there a difference, Cole? What, oh, yeah. What's the difference? What is it? Well, there is. It's, it's got a different band on it, or what? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's a different shape. Uh, it's got a different name. Uh, the fortieth to me. I mean, it's, it's a 1926 uh, series, you know, but it's – Rick has smoked – I will say this. Rick has smoked undoubtedly a lot more of these than I ever have in my whole life. But I think, to me, it's a lot smoother. It's a little bit closer to just above medium than, per se, like the number 9 or the 80th or, you know, some of the other shapes, like the number 2 and the same Maduro. It just seems like the 40th has its own identity to me. In the, in the spectrum. Is there any difference in filler? Or What's that? blend? Is there any difference in filler or blend? Not to my knowledge. It could be aging. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I haven't had a privilege to talk to uh, the, any of the Padrones. Really, I've never met them. But uh, it, it does smoke and it does taste different. The only one that I know that is different is like the TAA Toro, uh, 1964 uh, the release that they have. That one's got a little bit more age on it. Tastes a lot like what the uh, a lot of people say the old Padrones smoke like. I mean, Padrones phenomenal either way you cut it. It just comes down to preference, really. Well, Rob, I went ahead it's, and it's in, in my good. grabbing for a cigar today, I'm going to do a little bit of brand placement here. I got my giant, one of my many giant bags, Boveda bags right here, and we're going to yeah. play a little game of cigar roulette. And that's basically where you take a Boveda bag, okay, you reach into it and you grab a cigar and then whatever you get, uh, you get. So I think we're going to go with Trinidad. Oh, this is the new Trinidad. No, no, I, I new want Los Bree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a great that's cigar. Oh, we smoked it with. No, that, that seems like that, a Bob. shameless, the shameless promotion for Scotty from uh, Altadas when we went to yeah. the uh, unwrapped. Have you had this one yet, Rob? I'll show you a picture. Of yeah. Like here. Have you had this I, guy right here? I had that. That's a great stick. It is a good cigar. It is. I liked it. It is. I like to you know see the. Uh, yeah. What, what do you got, Cole? Well, here's what's sad. As soon as he took out his Padron 40th, I'm like, well, I'll just put my back in my in my uh, my ar- my uh, my armored my armored sport. But I don't have the bag that Rick does. I only have the shirt. Now, if I can get oh, that in there, I only have the shirt. I have right shirt. There. But what I do have for a cigar to smoke, though, before Rob obviously topped all of us, I felt like Ooh. it was a Crux Epicure Maduro type of a day. Nice. That's a great stick. It Bold, is a great the Pusto Extra. Haven't smoked one in a while. Cup of coffee. It's like With friends, local guys. Triple chocolate cake is what that cigar is like to me. Oh, super rich. I love 100%. it. One hundred percent. Slight it's chew. Strong. It's not strong at all. No, it's super chocolate and not bitter. No, smooth. Yep. Very smooth. Just that deep, rich, consistent. A little bit of sweet and a little bit of spice in the background of it too. Just a hint of it. Yeah, not overwhelming into anything else, but just beautiful. I'm gonna do the. I'm doing the oh, Todd yeah. real quick. I got to roll with the Todd here. There we go. Unbelievable. Todd, Todd from uh, from my I deal with all the time. Bro. He he patented, and I. You know what? If you'd like to, what use is it? it? You can. I don't know. That's true. <laughs> you, you what are you you tapping some of the the stuff off the end after you cut it? Absolutely. You just get a little bit of that extra garbage off the, the end there, and it's nice and clean. So, um, yeah. I think the mad scientist think, who created Frankenberry p- programmed that into him. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. I think there's such, it's so interesting to see the rituals of lighting a cigar. It's crazy, isn't it? Everybody's got, yeah, everyone different. does it. Everybody's exactly. different, you know? 
what, what's your what's your ritual? What what's your, what do you do? I don't know, man. A good cutter is key for me. I've I've uh, you know, some people do, especially when they're traveling. They're like, oh, I can just bite it or oh, or uh, oh, use oh. my thumbnail. That's you know, just bite the cap off, like. And I get that a lot on the road because you can't always travel with hardware. But at right. the end of the day, I don't know. I just I've decided to carry a cheap cutter because no matter what. I like a good straight cut more than I like anything else. I'm right, 100, I'm right there with you. You can cut anything with it. I mean, you know, I think what you get right. in trouble of with like a V cutter is, unless you have like a really sharp one, like God, the Calibri V cutters are phenomenal. The Zycar ones are nice and deep. It's like impossible to cut anything with a taper down a bellicoso, a torpedo. It just, it just mashes. It just obliterates it if it's not sharp or it's just short. I'm with you yeah. guys. I got to go 100% with a straight cut. I mean, it, it, for me, that's just what I like. I've used, if I'm, if I'm someplace and I don't have a cutter, I've used my thumbnail, kind of do that little circle around it and kind of cut it off. That's a nice, easy way of doing it. Um, but the biting of the thing, uh, no, no. Yeah. And uh, with a V cut, Cole, it's tough because if, if the cap isn't low enough, your V cut goes right through the cap of the cigar and then you can have unraveling. So for me, I'm, I'm with you guys. Straight cut is is where I got to oh, be. Oh, yeah, you've cut right past the crown. Right. Right past the crown. Oh, it's yeah. It's crazy, too, looking, working at a cigar shop to see all the different rituals that different guys do. Some guys, they want to lick the cigar first. I've seen that. Um, other guys, yeah. <laughs> if they're I hate using it. their own cutter, they can do it. If, they, if they're using their own cutter, go for it. I don't give a right. shit. Don't but use the, the public the day, cutter. Don't use the public cutter. <laughs> You know how many times we have to sanitize that thing? It's crazy, oh, man. I know. I know. At, at least once in the down. past year. At least it's like going to in food and somebody <laughs> just blatantly looking at you and just spitting right in your lunch. I mean, it's just it's, <laughs> yeah, it's obnoxious. Yeah. yeah. You got to move on, Rick. I'm going to get worked up here. Um, <laughs> so, so since we're talking about rituals with your cigar, Rob, what, what are you drinking? You and Cole are both drinking something. I myself uh, have got myself a little uh, – espresso with the pinky out you know i had i had espresso but it took you too long to get the zoom going so i was done with the espresso before we even got started man <laughs> you, cr you crushed it you, you know i was it. gonna make coffee but then you know i decided to put a keurig k-cup in so i got some i went italian rick just for you little oh, lavazza right. well wow. my people listen my people need all the help they can get right now okay we're struggling right now a little bit over there if you haven't noticed so well, i don't know man we're doing pretty good here in america rick yeah. it's just it's just gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> so this is Rob is have you done this any type of this virtual cigar setting right now I mean obviously you have box press right which you do yeah. phenomenal yeah. Uh, great great show um, but have you been doing this since we've had this you know quarantine so to speak sure. have you been doing any type of uh, you know virtual herf or whatever you want to call it yeah man um, light them up by cigar journal mm -hmm. they've been doing one um, it's every Wednesday Friday and Sunday um, like Class Kellner from Davidoff was in there one day. Uh, Maya Silva, she was in there another day. Unfortunately, because it's v in Vienna, um, it's a seven-hour difference. So for us, oh, sure. they get together at 4 o'clock at night, and it's really 9 a.m. our time. So you kind of got to get up early and, and have a cigar, but there's nothing wrong with that. Right. And then I've been doing some lives every Friday because, in fact, my favorite thing to do is actually go to Tobacco Grove on Fridays – have a cigar, hang out with people, see what's going on. And because we can't get together anymore, I'm like, well, I'll do a live event on Bovida's Instagram. And last week I had Pete Johnson on. I think this week we're going to have uh, uh, John Huber from Crown Heads. So it's been fun to just try to carry that tradition of, you know, Fridays are my days where I just like to close the week out with a, a good cigar. Right. That's awesome. So, so Rob, tell us a little bit, obviously we know you work for Bovida, but you know, there's people that are probably going to watch this. They may not even know what Bovida is, what it's about, et cetera. Tell us a little right. bit about Bovida. Yeah, Bovida, in fact, the, the origin story of Bovida is pretty interesting. Sean and Tim are the two founders, as well as two other uh, individuals that helped founded the company, which is one is a doctor who's a scientist, and his expertise was in mixing salts with water to create different relative humidity levels. And then another, another um, engineer from General Mills who is a packaging engineer. And so the, all four of them got together and really Sean and Tim were like, holy cow, we had no idea that if you took salt and water 
and mix it together, it would create a more stable environment to store your cigars. So they said, well, how can we put this in a package that everyone could just buy and use and, you know, it, it easily to uh, expire and it's not a mess. And that's when they came up with Bovida back in 2000 uh, or sorry, right around 2000 is when we really kind of came out with Bovida, but we had packaging in like 1998. That's when they incorporated and started. So really all, all it is inside the Bovida pack is salt, distilled water, and a food grade gubbing agent to really suspend the salt. Sure. Uh, the scientific term is called supersaturation, but it's basically just pushing and heating and kind of creating a vortex so that salt is evenly dispensed. That's why like recharging Bovida doesn't work because the salt clumps together and sure. then it just ends up not having the same, you know, two to four month window of uh, effectiveness and it doesn't allow the relative humidity to be distributed properly. So you get really poor performance. So yeah, of course, you know, people say like, well, why don't I just recharge these? Well, of course, salt is going to grab moisture, but it's just not going to be the same um, sure. efficacy and the same performance as, as what you are used to when you're buying boba off the shelf. Well, Rob, tell us about the, uh, tell us about the technology that's in the actual membrane, I think is probably the, the technical term of the actual packaging of Bovida, of how that works to be a act as a two-way agent and why it's you know it, it is a phenomenal product that we all use in the industry yeah, that, the things that that's you do. actually top secret our membrane is top secret for us because it's kind of the secret sauce but really what in it is, is terms, it, yeah. yeah really what it is is just a membrane that allows only pure water vapor so it's essentially just the humidity that's in the air to go in and out of it um and again the the real kind of the whole key to the the boba pack is the salt sure. if we don't use salt we just have a really poor time of creating a very stable environment for relative sure. humidity to be um stable otherwise it just it with sugars and stuff like that it gets really uh hairy on how accurate it is now rob sure. you you had mentioned um you know we talk about like the 60 gram packs i love the 60 gram packs right this question i get asked all the time at, at Tobacco Grove, and that is, how long do they last? How long do the packs last? I get it asked all the time. What's your response? Oh, that's a great question. But in a wood humidor, two to four months. And if they're not lasting you that long, you should really think about reseasoning with the 84s or understanding if you're using enough Bovida packs. Because some people will use like, they'll be like, oh, I only have 25 cigars, but it's a 100 count cigar humidor. So right. they use one Bovida pack, one large 60 gram pack. Well, you, in, you need four large 60 gram packs because it's one for every 25 total capacity of that humidor. So you got 150 count humidor, you need six large Bovida. 200, you need eight. So it's just simple math. I use, I use the equation of if you're pulling a boat, you can either pull it with a four cylinder engine or a V8. So you always got to be making sure that you have the right uh, amount of horsepower for that humidor that's great too. i mean I, I like to explain it too like the uh for a lot of people too the refrigerator analogy you only have if, if the refrigerator is full the motor doesn't run as often and if because everything's cold if you have one thing of milk just hanging out in the door in a 13 cubic refrigerator it's that motor constantly runs and the humidity runs all the way out rob right. have you have you found at all that um the quality of the humidor that that you're putting putting your cigars into with the boga has an impact on the duration and how long those packs will last. Absolutely. Huge, huge impact there. We've tested all the way down to your, you know, $40 humidors and the easiest spot for a humidor manufacturer to cheap out on is the bottom. So they'll make a, a less, uh, a less hardwood bottom and it'll be softer wood, but then you go all the way up to your LE blues, like you guys sell in the shop and you have, you can use 69s in there all day long and it's spot on within like two points. So right. yeah, the, the humidor is a huge, huge uh, piece of the whole puzzle. So we always say Bovida is as good as the container you put it in. Sure. Rob, we had a at Tobacco Grove, we've got a couple vault areas where we use basically old um, armored humidor, big, almost giant boxes of armored humidor to store some cigars. And no joke, I was earlier this year, I opened up one and it still had perfectly good condition. It still had the old 
white and blue humidipack ones from way back in the day. I don't even know how long and how old those things are. But like, 90s. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I even Day have 90s. my my armored humidor here at my house. I've just got one of a like a P20, and I still have one from years ago, and it's still perfectly fine, you know? Good. The only thing that I would say is with the ones that are older – uh, what can end up happening is that that salt can kind of create micro abrasions inside the film. And so then it can weep through there if it's been, you know, kind of dried and then rehumidified. Um, so I just tell people, if you get in, especially in an airtight, if you get a, a 12 month period out of your Bovida, you saved a ton of money, but to not risk it, change it out. Because at the end of the day, a $4 Bovida for 25 sticks is like cheap to me to oh, keep yeah. it humidified. Yeah, you I would ask you this too, investment. Rob. Protect the investment. I would ask you too, Rob, because I've I've kind of I thought about this the other day. You know, we've we've sold some some pretty varying uh, size humidors in the last uh, month, and I guess it's a it's a question that I have too. In comparison to using, let's say, what's the trade off between using like a bunch of the sixty gram packs versus the tr versus the three twenty gram packs? What would you say to somebody, I guess, an in interest of either space or an in interest of uh, efficiency and what's the best way to use both either individually or maybe even uh, collectively to, depending upon the size and volume of the humidor? You can always use both sizes together. Um, the key with Bovid is to not mix the relative humidity level. So I wouldn't mix a 69 with a 72 just Correct. because the lower RH level is going to suck all the moisture out of the higher RH level one. Let me move here into the light. Hopefully that works. Oh, yeah. um, there he is. Hey, I'm back. Sorry, the, the tree and the sun are going down. And uh, not the tree, but uh, the sun's going I hope down. It's going to be a bad With the sun, though, I think uh, it's going to be a early. bad episode. Yeah. <laughs> this, this actually might turn out to be a really good episode. Actually. Yeah. This is when we I'm lost giving, Bob. Uh, let's say condolences. Uh. I'm giving you some prime time action, right? <laughs> but it, it, I, you know, just before we were doing this, I can't tell you all the places I tried to go to find and have a cigar because it, it was either dogs or kids or cars or UPS or somebody riding their motorcycle it was so loud out here. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, Dude, sure. You're lucky. I tried putting up a barrier cause I, I only have sunlight on my uh, patio and uh, I went to walk away and grab a chair and I damn near took out my table. <laughs> I might've been, I might've been limping here. I might've been kind of like at an angle like this little, little obtuse. So Rob, yeah, you're saying then basically that if we're if you're using a 69% uh, bovida pack in your humidor, you don't want to throw in a 75. You don't want to throw in a 72. Keep them all at the same. Right. Yeah. Some people think it'll average out, and that's not the case because no. we're using salt, and it's accurate. And really, what salt does is goes, I'm going to hang on to this moisture unless it's called for, or I'm going to start absorbing moisture if something comes in and threatens this environment. So it's kind of like a dog. Like as soon as uh, a threat comes in, it immediately starts barking and starts absorbing that moisture. And sure. really, that's what you don't want to happen because if it's in absorb mode, it's essentially not feeding as much moisture to your cigars. So you can actually have a problem where you're, the bovid is sucking the moisture out before the cigars can get it. So really, with the bovida packs, keep to the right relative humidity level and keep that constant, but you can mix sizes. Sure. And with the 320, it's essentially about five Bovida, large Bovida. I think we're it's like five it, and a half, yeah. I yeah, we're, we're calling it the sure. extra large. So the 320, just for simplicity, is the extra large, and the 60 gram is the large. So you can mix the two different sizes, but I would say the extra large is really ideal for people who have humidors because you could use one extra large in a 50 count humidor and get six to nine months of life out of it. Sure. Um, if you have a wine or a coolador or anything where you're storing vast amounts of uh, cigars, the extra large is a perfect size. And then inside the drawers of like the wine doors and the coolador or inside the boxes, I go and use the large Bovida packs just to kind of help out with that sure. uh, distribution of humidity. So I know a lot of people ask about the variance of space. I mean, they like the idea of both, but they're like when they fall kind of in between and like a hundred count box it's kind of a fine line of uh, efficiency versus space, I guess has been the questions that people have asked. Yeah. I double it too. So in my hundred count, I use two of the extra large and I just get twice as much. Uh, I, you know, I get six to nine months out of it sure. versus two to four. And Where's the best me, place to put them? 
I put them in the lid because I have full humidors. Sure. Now, if you don't have a full humidor, you can use them as dividers. They can touch your cigars. They're totally safe. They're not going to over humidify your cigars that they touch. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I put them in the lid because I, I like cigars. So I gotta, I gotta keep all that real estate for cigars. I got gotcha. you. Cause I usually have people put it on the bottom. Yeah. Rob, you talked about, uh, obviously we're talking about the humidity packs, which you guys are known for, but that's not the only thing you guys sell. What, talk to us about some of the other products that you guys have available. Well, yeah, we have the, like you had, Rick, we had the humidor bags. Um, and a lot of times people think those bags are just Ziploc bags, but they're really not. They're actually engineered to prevent moisture from going in and out, just like a Tupperware container. So anytime I need extra space, I buy a large Boveda humidor bag, one-year humidor bag, and just put the whole box in there. And now I have storage for a whole year. Um, the other products are obviously our acrylic humidors. If you like to have like a little show display, they're clear. So I recommend keeping them out of sunlight, but they're a great display. They're great for parties. Uh, or if you're, you know, just like to show off some cigars every once in a while at the office. Uh, I like those. And then we have the Butler, which is a little Bluetooth hygrometer. And again, if you're using Boveda, you really don't need to be too worried about your humidity with a hygrometer, but you know, we're all cigar geeks. We all want to make sure yeah. our products are kept fresh. So a Butler is helpful. It says sends it right to your phone and you can see it. And then it gives you like a line graph as well. So you can see history, which is what I like with the digital. I couldn't see history. And now sure. I can see if I have any issues with my humidity over a period of time. What humidity do you like to smoke cigars at? Cause I know I get this question a lot too, with the variants of different wrappers and different countries and age and, you know, right. We always hear about ready to smoke stuff versus, you know, I think there's 90% of the industry is made to smoke. Cigars are made to smoke now, but I mean, some people like to hold on to stuff. I guess it's a two part question. What humidity do you like to smoke cigars at ideally for you? And if somebody's going to hypothetically age something long-term, is it better to go 65, 69 versus 72? Yeah. You know, if you're going to store for a long period of time, do 65. If you have Cubans store them at 65 or lower. Um, but what do I like to smoke my cigars at is so determined on the type of cigar. So you take like an Opus X, an Opus yep. X really smokes well at 65 or less. Yep. It's just, you know, anything with a thick oily wrapper smokes really better in a drier, those low 60s, mid to low 60s. And then you take like a Don Carlos with a Cameron wrapper and that Cameron wrapper is so thin, it smokes great between 70 and 72. But sure. if you were to reverse that, they would both smoke horribly. Like the Don Carlos smokes horribly at 65 and so does the Opus X. It smokes horribly at 72. Yep. So it's really dependent on the type of cigar. And I'll be very clear. Like I, I have multiple different humidors that store at different relative humidity levels just because of that. Sure. I found that I like to typically keep my cigars at a lower humidity, like that 65, 60, you know, right in that is the sweet spot for usually the cigars I like to smoke. You know, at, at Tobacco Grove, we keep the humidor uh, basically right at about 68%, right? Right there, as we found, right. does really well for, you know, encompassing all the cigars seem to take to it very, very well. It splits the difference of 72 and, you know, yeah. And in a wood humidor, you're going to drop – just because the wood is going to exchange moisture naturally, you're going to probably drop two to five points. So if you got a 72, you're going to be hovering in the high 60s. If you got a 69, you're probably going to be hovering in the mid 60s. And then if you got a 65, you're probably going to be hovering in the low 60s. So it's all kind of dependent upon the type of humidor that it's put into. But if you're in airtight containers, you can get real precise, um, which is what I like to do when I go to smoke something, especially like a, a Cuban or an Opus X or a Don Carlos. I might actually take it out, put it inside a Boveda humidor bag with the relative humidity that I love that cigar to be at and just let it sit for 24 hours to 48 hours until it's ready. But you guys have a really cool partnership with quite a few different manufacturers like Tatuaje, Rocky Patel, uh, Fuente, et cetera. And then there's more as well. Um, I love having those little Boveda packs in each one of those boxes as they come and they've got you guys now have the, the seal the bulk yep. of the seal that's on there that's really really cool as well um i think it's interesting sometimes when we open a box sometimes uh you know we'll, we'll see the bova to pack it's it's kind of dried out and you know that's a good thing because it's doing its job it's doing right. what it's supposed to do right 
absolutely. During that transit period inside that UPS truck or wherever it was, it's, you know, that boba pack is going to give off the moisture before the cigars do. And that's what we, exactly what we want it to do. Yeah, that's important kind of for us to explain to people that get a box with that labeling on it, that they're like, well, this thing's dry. It's not, well, that's, that's what it's meant to be. I mean, that's, I think that's an important thing to kind of educate a lot of consumers on of, of why that's there and it's necessary purpose for the packaging of it. Rob, what yeah, are by some the time it, Go ahead. by the time it hits your guys' shelf, that pack might be dried out and it's not going to re humidify itself necessarily right. in the humidor because the humidor is taking care of the cigars now at that point. It's uh, so for people to get a box from your guys's uh, right. establishment and have that pack dry, it's totally fine. It's not sure. detrimental to the cigars. What are some of the other vendors that you work with besides, like I mentioned, Tatuaje, you know, Fuente, Fuente, that kind of thing. What are some of the other ones? You know, the list is so strong with how many people package with us now, but I mean, the biggest, one of the biggest ones is Altatus. So everything that is uh, encompassed in Altatus, um, we, we have a lot of different OEMs that have decided to jump on. Even Padron does some packaging with us, but uh, all in all, I mean, that's been a huge part of what we've been doing as far as trying to make sure that stuff is leaving the factory very well humidified coming to your guys' retail establishment fully ready to go and be sold. And, and Altidus, because there's not a lot of people know probably what Altidus encompasses, but you're looking at Monte Cristo, Romeo and Julieta, H. Upman, et cetera, you know, Trinidad, et cetera, yeah. um, are all encompassed under the Altidus umbrella as well, just to name a couple of the, you know. Yeah, play, so et cetera. along with that, Rob, you know, we, we meet a lot of uh, – a lot of great people in this industry. What's a great, what's, what's your best cigar moment that you've had to date? Any places you've traveled or people that you've met? I know with the box press uh, show that you have, which is, which is really phenomenal. You get, you get to really get a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one, uh, and talk with a lot of people that a lot of us don't even get to talk to. Um, just kind of wanted to ask your thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, uh, cigar experience has been unbelievable i just remember going to my first trade show and you know working with you guys and being in retail at tobacco grove i always wanted to go to that show and i ended up going there and i just was like i remember being a kid in a candy shop looking at all these mega booths and all you know the fuente booth and and everybody's there and all of a sudden it's like man i'm finally here and then recently i was just uh in sorry i'm trying to get into the light here but i was recently in honduras to interview oscar Valderas. And I think his story is so unique because it's a, it's a story of a guy who was a driver for Rocky Patel. And then all of a sudden, you know, several years later, he's making his own cigar brand. I think it was 13 years or 10 years ago, he stopped doing the Rocky Patel thing and now is doing, doing his own. And he just had us down as the first group to his, uh, his factory. And it was just amazing. And That's I think awesome. really getting your hands involved in understanding their whole process of growing tobacco and you know aging it and then rolling it and then boxing it it's unbelievable that this stuff takes three to six years to produce before it even hits the shelf it's unbelievable absolutely, absolutely. i mean you have it's so uh great to be able to actually go to uh you know a cigar factory and see the fields it, there is so much that goes into getting this product to us and you know we, most people just, you cut it, you light it, you don't even think about it, but there are so many different people that are involved in getting this product to us in the manner that it comes, you know, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. It really gives you an appreciation for it. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a true luxury that, you know, we're very fortunate to, to afford. Um, I wanted to ask you too, Rob, what is the future of Boveda going forward? What does that look like in the premium cigar industry and even beyond in other industries that I know you touch outside of the premium cigar industry? Um, for us, I mean, the premium cigar industry is all pretty much uh, brick and mortars. You know, we're really right now during this time, we're really focused on what our brick and mortar shops are doing. Um, hoping to God that, you know, places like you guys are able to keep curbside business going. Um, and that's ultimately the future for us is making sure that we continue to deliver on what we've always said is just making sure that you can store your cigars fresh and accurately without any fluctuations and make it easy. That's sure. been our whole model from day one. I mean, Sean and Tim are cigar enthusiasts and they wanted a product that would deliver on making this hobby easier 
and not so cumbersome because if you spend too much time trying to figure out how to store your cigars at the end of the day, you're going to give up on the project. You're going right. to give up on buying cigars and, you know, you might go into the shop and buy and go and you know, only take three or four cigars with you. But at the end of the day, if I like, you know, Padron 40 I might buy a box and now I want to know how to store those so that they right. don't go bad. So I can smoke them over a year, over two years. I mean, one of the best things that I just recently did was I did a live with Pete Johnson on Friday and I smoked one of his original Mexican experiments with a new Mexican experiment experiment. And it was so unbelievable, the difference of the flavor, but it's just cool that I can take an eight year old cigar and smoke it next to a brand new one because I was able to keep it fresh with Boveda and not have to worry about it going bad. That's awesome. That's remarkable when you think about it at the end of the day. Yeah. Is there any future projects you guys got coming up? Or is that kind of a under wraps type of a thing? Yeah, we always have uh, new patents that we're putting out and new projects and all sorts of new stuff. I mean, the Butler was one of the new things that we tried to do. Unfortunately, that's technology and that's always difficult. Sure. But uh, as far as Boveda, we never thought we would even make the extra large 320 gram. We always thought, you know, machine wise, we couldn't do it. Sure. And then all of a sudden we push the limits and we're always asking to push the limits. And that's what I love about Boveda. It's like, it's never just good enough. Well, Rob, yeah, you we have, solid. Rob, you have other things too, besides just cigars that you, that you have, you know, I mean, guitars, et yep. cetera. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Great, yeah. Yeah. So our uh, music program, even though it makes up a, a small, let me see if I can get, okay makes up a small part of our business, it's still essential for like people who are musicians to want to store their instruments with the right relative humidity level. So again, instruments should be kept between 40 and 60% relative humidity. And we make a pack that does that. Um, and again, you get the same amount of life out of them, you know, two to four months in a good guitar case. So that's one of the projects. Of course, cannabis is another project that's huge in into making sure not only for the people who are buying it and that's what we've started to realize is like the people who are buying it sometimes are buying at 25% less weight and they're still, still having to pay full price right. for the same product. So it's, it's interesting because cigars aren't sold by weight. They're sold by, you know, flavor and, and all that, but it's the same principle. It's the, the, the sugars and the oils in the cigar that make the flavor for cannabis. It's the same thing. It's the terpenes, and the cannabinoids that are on there. And if they get their loss, just like a cigar, there goes sure. everything. Well, you, you mentioned a little bit ago, we were talking about, you know, getting life back to normal when, you know, we can get back to doing probably curbside to go and then ultimately getting back to having people in the store to enjoy cigars, which I don't think is very far off at all. Um, you know, but uh, in the meantime, you know, for that we've got a promotion that you and I had talked about setting up, which I love. Um, we only have 10 of these deals available, but we're going to do a, basically it's a buy four, buy any four of the Boveda 60 gram packs, and you're going to get one for free. And we've only got 10 of these deals available, but if you're interested in one of those, just email us at info at tobaccogrove.com and we will take the first 10 people that ask for it. Obviously, this will process once we get back to the shop and everything like that. Um, so you don't have to worry about that happening right now. But you'll you'll get a free Boveda with uh, your purchase of four. So thanks, Rob, for doing that for us. That's phenomenal. Yeah, no problem. We want to make sure people are able to keep their cigars fresh during this time period. And obviously, if if the weather's getting nice like it is, right, uh, people can still be outside smoking in their backyards. Hopefully, hopping on the phone or on Facetime with other people and enjoying a cigar on Friday evenings or. Saturdays or whenever they enjoy cigars. Well, we spent about a week and a half doing the curbside to go and you'd be amazed at how many people were loading up on Boveda packs. I mean, you know, yeah, yes, cigars were flying out, but the Boveda packs in itself was, it was crazy. You know, you got to, you got to make sure they stay fresh. Otherwise it's uh, kind of pointless to have all these cigars. And the cool thing we, me and Rick had decided to do too, to kind of extend not only the brand, but to kind of, you know, put that forward as well as a lot of guys that had like, uh, we, we made sure we put one of the little eight gram packs in every bag for guys for a curbside. Cause you never know a lot of guys that, you know, like you said, they don't have a humidor or they only are used to taking four at a time or five, you know, outside of the actual various levels of the humidor bags that, you know, Rick showed earlier and small, medium and the big extra large, which I think all of us have. 
um, it's been it's been uh, one thing that a lot of consumers really you know look to as their their beacon for keeping their cigars in in really good standing, which is pretty phenomenal, especially for a local company too. A lot of people don't think Boveda, uh, you know, around is a local company. It's surprising at uh, how often we we just we explain that to people that it's a Minnesota company, which is pretty sweet too. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Everything's made. A lot of people think, oh, we get this made in China. No, everything's made in Wisconsin. Yep. All of our raw ingredients are sourced here and put together at our plant in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. And then from there, they get shipped out worldwide. I mean, so we have a whole warehouse in the Netherlands that helps uh, distribute product to our uh, European Union and all the countries over there. So it's a global company, which is amazing to the fact that uh, when I started four years ago, it was about uh, nine people in an office with about a handful of people remote. And now I think our whole operation is pushing almost... What? 60 to 80 people. Rob, Rob oh. what, did, uh, what did you do uh, before you worked for, for Boveda? What, 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 what did you do, oh, buddy? I was, I was working with you guys. No, I know that. I, I, okay, but what, <laughs> what did you do even no, before? No, 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 before that. You have one of the most oh, unique. No, no, not part. No, we're talking full no, time. You got one of the most career. unique backgrounds of yeah. pretty much yeah. the majority mean, of people that I know. Because we have a nickname for you. And the, the nickname that I got at the shop? Yes. What is it to you? Who gave it to you? Uh, I think Tree gave it to me. I don't know. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Who gave it to me, Cole? I did. You gave it to me? Yeah. Do you want to divulge what, any of it? Yeah, what, 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 do you, what, do you, what did you call me, Cole? I called you The Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because why? of my size or my wrestling ability at all, right? No, but you are undefeated. At least that's what I heard in the street. I don't know if that's true. I might have to go back and look at the, ba uh, look at the docket. I don't know how true this that really is, but. This isn't The Undertaker from uh, our WWF time period back when I was a kid, uh, The Undertaker and, you know, uh, Hulk Hogan. But The Undertaker nickname comes from my career in funeral service. Yeah. So you guys were always science. gracious gracious enough for me to be able to pick up hours on the weekends or, you know, what if I was in between jobs, they, you guys would let me back into the shop and work some hours. So, yeah, my, my time in funeral service was really interesting. I got an opportunity to help a lot of families and see people through something that you know they don't know how to do themselves they don't know how to manage uh how to put together a funeral without uh you know the proper guidance so i was able to help guide people well, through that. Were... But i attributed a lot of my success with the success i had in real uh with retail because you, you guys known, you, know, you were known as as mortician rob so whenever we get jobs, we got a lot of everybody's, you know, but if you were Mortician Rob, that was who you were, the undertaker. So, yeah. um, well, listen, we're, we're running out of time, uh, but, uh, you know, special thank you, Rob, for, for coming on this, for joining us and spending your afternoon talking with us uh, so the people on Facebook can, can see this and everything. It's awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much. I have coming. one last question, hopefully real brief. I know there's a lot of competitors out there that are trying to do what Boveda does. Where, how does Boveda stand out even with the increased competition that has been kind of uh, come along in the last couple of years? Uh, why is Boveda we, the best? I know why, but know, why is it? The difference is, is the salt and the performance of obviously the, the membrane as well. So some of the products that you see out there, we, we looked at doing those types of products 15 years ago. Uh, we never slapped a patent on it because we thought, well, the, the membrane is not good enough. It doesn't keep all the solids in. Um, or the product just doesn't perform to the two to four month window that we want. Uh, so when you have that, we just decided not to put a patent on it. Uh, but it's, it's not new technology, um, and it's not something that performs the same way. Uh, unfortunately, you know, being kind of the category king or the industry leader, somebody right. who de you know, developed the technology, developed the patents on it, um, it gets to a point where they kind of ride your coattails and we'll see how long they can hang on. But at the end of the day, Bovid is here to make sure that cigars are protected and uh, the competition will sort itself up because the performance can be seen uh, vividly as soon as you start testing it and using it. Well, Rob, thank you again for taking the time out. It's been great having a cigar with you. And, Absolutely. Um, appreciate you doing the, the buy four, get one on the 60 gram packs, 10 available. Um, and, uh, and take care of yourself, buddy. We'll see you soon, okay? Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Can't wait to get back at Tobacco Grove and have a cigar with you guys. Absolutely, man. We look forward to it, brother.